We are live from the studios of the Association of African Universities, and this is AAU Talks on AAU TV. My name is Kwesi Sam. Now, today we are looking at reforms um, in African higher education. How can we ensure that higher education responds to the growing demands or the needs of our continent? And we have in our midst a vice chancellor from Great um, University in Zimbabwe. I will go for a quick break, and when I come back, I will introduce my guest. Stay tuned. This is AAU TV. You just joined us. This is AAU Talks on AAU TV, and my name is Kwesi Sam. This morning we are um, looking at reforms in African higher education, and you can send us your comments via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook, and AAU underscore 67 via Twitter. We have in the studio um, a professor, and he is also um, a board member of the Association of African Universities. He doubles up also as the vice chancellor for Great Zimbabwe University. All the way from Zimbabwe, he is with us in our studio, and we are privileged to have Professor Rungano Jonas Zobo. Prof, you are welcome to AU Talks. Thank you. How are you doing, Prof? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm also fine. And how have you enjoyed Ghana? Well, I've been here on a number of occasions. Occasions, so great. This is home. Exactly. Right. All right. Thank you. So, Prof, um, this morning on AU Talks, we are looking at a very critical issue, which has to do with revitalizing African higher education and how can we reform our educational system. Most importantly, you, you know that our mode of communication in the past century has changed. Our way of dressing has changed. Our way of life has, has changed. But our educational system seems to be the, the same. What is the issue? Well, first of all, we wanted to say, what do we educate our people for? Great. What should our universities be educating our citizenry for? Mm. I think this is where, where we must begin. We continue surprisingly to teach for the same reasons that our university taught half a century ago. Mm -hmm. The pursuit of diplomas and degrees, giving our citizenry the impression that the more diplomas and degrees you have, the more educated you are. You are, yes. Uh, our programs continue very largely to be unrelated to the issues of development, issues mm -hmm. of uh, human health, issues of uh, alleviation of poverty, mm -hmm. uh, issues of transformation of the environment. Yes. Uh, things that should help 
our continent to drift away from the perennial poverty mm -hmm. towards a new direction of self-emancipation, production, ability to survive. I, I don't think that our universities have caught on. Mm -hmm. We have not yet come to the realization that our nations cannot continue to invest huge resources into teaching the same things that we taught 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. In the same way that we taught 50 years ago, we need a total paradigm shift, shift from curriculum reform to methods of teaching to how we design our programs in our education. Great. Prof, when you speak to a number of vice chancellors, they know what must be done. But it looks like um, implementation is a bit difficult, drifting from what is happening now to a more advanced way of teaching and running our universities are a bit difficult. Prof, you have been in the space for a very long period of time. What is the challenge? Why is it difficult for us to implement the things that we, we want to? Firstly, our governments have surprisingly begun to reduce spending in higher education. Okay. So those of our universities that should be teaching programs that relate directly to development, mm. the sciences in particular, agriculture, climate change, find that they are not getting adequate funding to pursue those programs. Mm. And what is happening, they fall back on the traditional programs, exactly. which bring in more students. Mm -hmm. And because they pay fees, they have become more reliant on the fees that come from students. So we have now become more driven mm -hmm. by the need for funding from students, exactly. rather than the need to transform society and to relate to the continent's needs for development. I think that's, that's the real problem. Exactly. If you look at, at what's happening in the Far East and in Europe, mm. governments spend huge amounts of money on investing in higher education, exactly. transforming the methodologies of teaching, and in particular, linking the programs in higher education specifically to the needs of oh, each country. Sure. Uh, you, you, you take the example of, 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 the, of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, a large number of universities in the United States now focus on research and productive, productivity. Community service. Community service mm -hmm. with the aim of coming up with tangible products which impact on human survival. Mm -hmm. We haven't got there yet. Uh, we, we still need to convince ourselves that we must walk away from the traditional uh, mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. towards programs that answer the questions, how do we get to tomorrow yes. on a full stomach? Mm -hmm. How do we cross, not just the next village, but how would we fly into the skies mm -hmm. metaphorically? And also in real terms, we can't, we can't continue to dig the ground in order to get crickets. Yeah. We must search our environment, search our skies for things that matter. Mm. Setting in a very uh, 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 ordinary but scientific way, our own, our own uh, uh, drones are on our own uh, technology mm -hmm. up into the skies so that we can begin to focus on areas in the developing world which require attention. Exactly. Satellites, countries like Malaysia, etc., have sent their own uh, satellites into, 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 into orbit mm -hmm. so that they can begin to understand issues of the environment, understand issues of climate change, uh, issues of agricultural, uh, uh, production. Th these are the things that we ought to be doing. We are mm. not doing that. Exactly. We are pursuing the humanities. Not that they shouldn't be pursued. But I'm saying that we now need to look more closely at uh, how we prepare ourselves not just for today, but for the future. future. And yeah. it's only those universities that can relate what they teach to the needs of their people 
that will remain relevant. Mm. Apparently, our students are very good at identifying what is relevant, not only in their own countries, but, but outside across, their borders. Yes. And they will go to those universities which challenge them mm. to come on, on board into those programs which hold the future in terms of um, creativity, in terms of job creation, mm -hmm. and in terms of employment. So, Prof, <laughs> has our education system lost touch of reality? Um, based on your, your, your submissions? It has failed to address what is important mm. uh, to the developing world. Great. We, we, about a year or so ago, Vice Chancellor in Zimbabwe took a trip almost around the world, mm. the Far East and uh, uh, some, some universities uh, 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 in Africa, to discover why those universities were so different. And one of the things that struck me was, for example, we went to the University of Brazil, where in a lab we saw students developing hypertensive tablets, okay. testing them in the lab and manufacturing them and sending them uh, out uh, uh, into industry mm -hmm. for testing and so forth. Now, we, we have run away from our mission as universities, and mm -hmm. that's my point. We have either run away or we have not attempted to get there. Okay. I say run away because even though we know what we require in order to survive, we are not making a genuine attempt to stay in focus mm. and to keep reminding ourselves that universities are not simply institutions for awarding certificates yes mm. these are instruments that must really address issues of poverty alleviation mm -hmm. issues of uh, uh, agricultural uh, growth mm -hmm. issues of health issues of climate change peace and security peace and security mm. those issues which will make it possible for us mm. to begin to drive uh, our curriculum was the things that matter most. Professor, what do we do as, as, as a continent to ensure that our higher education institutions are being put to their toes and are relevant to the needs of, of, of the continent? Our governments must become convinced mm. that they are spending huge resources driving universities into areas that are least relevant. Okay. So it must begin with a, a commitment on the part of our governments mm. to the fact that we must change uh, our focus. Mm -hmm. We must change our direction. Mm -hmm. Now, once our universities have agreed that it's important to change, we come back to our educators, our, our university leaders, and I tell you, that a university is as good as its leader. <laughs> exactly. A university is as good as its vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. Our vice chancellors and leaders of higher education institutions must also become convinced that they could not continue to lead institutions that have no direction. Mm -hmm. That they must begin to design programs of teaching and learning which will answer those critical questions. And one, why do we exist? Mm -hmm. Two, how are we able to transform? Yes. Three, if we took a, 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 a random test of how far we have traveled these universities, mm -hmm. from, from universities of the 50s to trans universities of today, how far have we changed? I'm advocating a, a consistent change, albeit real focused mm. on why we exist as universities. universities. You know, the celebrated Ngalumu Nyerere once said, our universities and schools and the education system as a whole continue to teach our students, uh, our students uh, how to get to the moon mm. before we are able to reach the next village. <laughs> you see, uh, let us feed our people first and mm. higher education must come up with uh, Strategies. Yes, Great. with with 
those those those, those crops that mm. are resistant to drought those crops that will feed our people nourish our people so that they begin to abandon empty stomachs mm. and replace them with nourished stomachs mm. then we people will then begin to see the need to change the direction yes you can't tell an empty stomach that is not is not important to feed mm -hmm. you can't excite their focus and attention on development if they are surviving on empty stomachs yes you must feed your people first and once you have done that you will be able to attract their attention mm -hmm. towards a new kind of curriculum that, that 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 is excellent and beautiful and one major area that has also been a bane to African higher education is that we are not speaking to one another. We are not developing partnerships as universities. For example, University of um, Great Zimbabwe University may want to develop a curriculum or a program which is already um, existing in another university. But because we are not communicating, we are not talking to each other, we tend to duplicate or we tend to do things not right. How can African universities build better partnerships among themselves to solve this problem that we've identified? You couldn't have spoken uh, more truly mm. than, than you have just done. We are neighbors living under the same roof mm -hmm. in a state of separation. Yes. Uh, almost divorced. Mm. We share the same continent. We share the same challenges of mm. drought. We share the same problems of poor health, and yet we refuse to sit together and say, how, how do we address those issues? Now, I want to propose mm. that we must first and foremost begin to say, not just as individual countries, but as a bloc, what are those things that draw us backwards? As a continent. As a continent, mm. as a region. And how do we begin to address them with a common vision? Yes. So that we don't continue to do the same things that another universe next door is doing. Mm. And if we have to do that thing, how do we design the curriculum in such a way that it enhances what's happening next door? Mm. And I want to suggest, too, that we must sit down as universities and say, how do we share the knowledge that we have mm -hmm. for a common purpose and a common goal? Sure. We, are not, we are not finding ourselves... We are walking in the dark with our arms spread out and hardly touching mm -hmm. problems that are so close to us. We must share our experiences. We must continuously ask the question, why, despite the number of students we, that pass through our universities, why are we failing to address the issues of development? Sure. We, 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 our ideas could fail to address those issues because we don't share. Mm. We don't share research uh, uh, programs. Outputs and everything. Uh, no. Mm. We produce volumes and volumes and volumes of research and simply shelve them on the, on, 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 on the shelves. Mm. That's partly because our governments don't appreciate research. See, in Europe, when you do a research, it, it finds its, its way into the economy. Mm -hmm. into government policy formulation, etc., etc. In our in our in our continents, we do research mostly in order to be paid. And be promoted as part and of our... promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you must research, publish or perish. Mm -hmm. And so we don't we don't care about what we research on. You might as well be researching on the relationship between uh, the amount of rainfall and the hair. <laughs> and the hair that grows in your head, <laughs> or, or the role of angels in heaven, uh, and that kind of thing. We, we, we have not learned mm. to say, look, sure, you may have large quantities of hair on your head, but they won't feed the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, you have not started to say, how do we begin to make a difference? Uh, okay. and, and so our research, relevant as it may be, mm. does not readily permeate into 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 society, yeah, society okay. through our governments if we don't find a donor mm. to sponsor uh, our research work yeah our research work and to sponsor 
the, 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 the propagation of our research results. We sit there and hold our hands in our, in our, in our, in our hands. Great. But, that, but, but Prof, don't, don't you think that higher education stakeholders have not been able to package research well to the, the demands or the needs of industry. For example, the way we communicate our research findings may not, industry players or those who need it may not understand how we, 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 we package it. How do we commercialize our, our research output um, for our continent? For example, you made mention to, of, of the fact that uh, in Brazil, there's a university that is coming up with a hypertension tablet. And you know they've gone through all the process from production or manufacturing right to the market. But we don't do that as a continent. We do them and then we shelve them. It's not a problem that higher education institutions, um, stakeholders have, rather than the government. See, our higher education institutions are walking in a different street. Yes. We are walking in the other street. Exactly. But we, 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 we seem not to know where we, we, we both come from. Exactly. We have remained distanced. Mm. And as a result, industry is not sharing our research proposals, mm -hmm. our research efforts, uh, the, and, and we, we are not benefiting from industry because we really we really go to industry and say, what are the main areas that require the attention of scholars? Yes. Neither do we say, as scholars, we feel that we should be researching into those areas. We have to share mm -hmm. uh, those issues. And as long as we remain distant, we are not succeeding, mm -hmm. young men. We are not succeeding because we are not sharing. You see, in Brazil and uh, in Malaysia, where I was talking about, industry funds research mm -hmm. into specific areas of development they feel are important. Important to them. And, and, and researchers respond directly to the needs of industry. Because at the end of the day, your results must translate into something, something useful. Exactly. And the, that translation will only be possible if it is backed up by industry. Mm -hmm. Our governments are not very good at sp sponsoring uh, translation of pro project results into tangible yes, uh, products. Output, yeah. But industries have the capacity, mm -hmm. they have the money, and, and they, have the, they have the ability to sponsor and translate our results into really real uh, tangible evidence. So there is very little marriage or harmony between ourselves and mm. industry. This is where we are missing it as, 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 as a continent. We must get in, into, into a marriage relationship which says, I survive because you survive. Mm -hmm. Not I survive because you sponsor my survival. Yes. We, we have to get away from a relationship w which is which has no grounding. Mm -hmm. Our relationship must be based on what we both need in order to survive. Great. In order for our people to survive. In order to make our education system relevant so that all these kids we drive mm -hmm. through our higher education, our secondary education system, when they get to university, will already know those areas that are important. Great. Science and technology, mm -hmm. IT, uh, mathematics, uh, medicine, engineering. Mm -hmm. and they will already have an appetite for those things because our whole education system will have trained and, 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 and direct, directed them into those areas for reasons that they can understand and see. Mm -hmm. There is no point in saying you must do physics. And you, the teacher gets into the classroom and his first lecture is at A level, is that uh, three quarters of you will drop out <laughs> uh, before the end of the term. The semester. <laughs> the semester. Mm -hmm. Or even in university where a lecturer, a professor comes in and says, oh, my dear, before the end of this semester, uh, half of you will have dropped out. Mm. See, you are, you are, you are, you are not only being dis discouraging, you are failing to address the need to prompt those students to love sciences, mm -hmm. to 
see that there is a reason for teaching sciences. Yes. So it's, it's, it's a psychology that we must dispense with. Mm. Uh, you don't have to say, because I found uh, science difficult when I was a student, why should a, a, another student find uh, it doable? Exactly. Uh, you see, mm. it's, it's not you can't do better than I did. It should be we must move the nation forward. And I think that we are failing dismally. Great. So Prof, before we move on to the next um, item, let's do look at the, the research and complete it. Do we have as universities also setting aside funds or some grant for, for research to promote their own research? That's our problem. That's our problem. Mm. The answer is in the majority of cases, no. Yeah. Most of the research that African universities undertake is funded or sponsored by the Commonwealth, uh, by mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of organizations, and they determine to a very large extent what you research on. Yes. And if you are not careful, by the time you complete your research, they will already have a market for it. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that the results of your research are quickly patented uh, so you can make use of them. And, 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 and it's, the, it's the people who, who fund, who call the shots. So that's our problem. We, mm -hmm. we don't, our governments have not put in place a funding system okay. that will make it possible for our, for our scholars, for our professors mm -hmm. to research in, into the, those areas where agent results are required. Are required. Great. Then, thank you so much, Prof. Um, another great problem that we have identified in the higher education space is the fact that we do not respond to the needs of the, the lower grades of education. For example, we don't have partnership with the senior high level of education, the basic education. And so we are just there and we are accepting graduate or we are accepting students from the lower grades to the higher education. We don't care whether they are well prepared at that level. We don't care what is happening there. And so how do we build partnership with the entire streams of education, right from basic to, to um, higher education? First, we must ensure that our students understand what it is that universities offer Good. and why they offer those programs. You need a synergy between yourselves and the High school system, for example, mm. do you have uh, uh, occasions when you invite uh, high schools in your area to come and see what it is that you are do offering? Yes. How it is, be how, how those programs are, are being offered, mm. and the potential there is for, for the them. students. Yes. yes. We 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 are part of one uh, system. We are on the same train, except some are in one part of the of the train and the other side in the, in the next mm. but in order in order to pass from one part of the train to the next you must find you must bridge exactly you must that bridge that that that, that 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 empty space mm. and we are not doing it we our universities are surprisingly in the majority of cases simply waiting for a level results to come out mm -hmm. and then and then source students who are ready for university we are not participating together in preparing our students for university. And I'll tell you what, we have a program back home where our, our, our uh, lecturers and professors, during vacations, will go to particular high schools okay. and assist students with their physics le le lessons, mm. chemistry lessons, bio biology lessons. And because of that synergy, by the time our students sit for exams, they already uh, uh, know in a very large measure. Sure. Yes. They know the benefits. Mm. They know what it is that universities offer. And then they can make informed decisions yes. on the programs that they will offer. But universities must go a little step, uh, a step further mm. and say, why are you encouraging them to move from this area the next area. Mm. Being careful that again we don't make a complete uh, 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 divorce or separation mm -hmm. between the humanities and the arts. Art, and so because, yes. because the marriage between those two must continue. You see, uh, you see the, uh, the hard sciences mm. uh, uh, would be a devastating uh, 
uh, idea if they are not tamed by the earth and the humanities. Uh, the earth and the humanities are the spirit that give sense and stability to the hard sciences. To the hard, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Your literature, your your history. Your that's African why Amer studies. That's why American yeah. universities, you see, are so good. Yeah. Because while you do medicine, you will do African literature. Mm -hmm. You will do uh, your, your geography. You will... Because there's such strong synergy yes. between the social sciences and, and the hard medicine, mm. uh, we, 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 we are the same human body that, that must understand the natural sciences and, and, and the liberal arts. Okay. And, and, and that's why we must never separate ourselves from them. And so I would, I would want to see a system of education at the secondary level where our universities are already deeply involved in the preparation of those young people sure. for university. Right. And you are not only preparing them for university, you are preparing them for the real life of work. Mm -hmm. The psychology that when you get your degree, a job is waiting for you, I think that has already been disproven. Okay. Those of our, of our kids who when they are they adopt, they adopt and they are kept, think that as soon as they walk outside the door, there will be an employer waiting for them. <laughs> have been sharply There's no more, sure. There are no jobs out there. You are the job. Mm. You must create jobs. And the spirit of entrepreneurship must be grown and developed right from high school mm. so that our students are not looking forward to employment they are looking forward to employ others. To, and how to create employment. Sure. How they must know the areas where employment can be created. Great. And, and therefore education becomes a vibrant method mm -hmm. for, for employment generation. It's critically important Great. that our young people who come into university must understand that uh, we must create employment and that we will not simply be looking forward to government to provide employment. Thank you very much, Prof. We'll go for a, a short break, and when we come back, we'll be looking at the, the STEM, the STISA, and yes. then vis-a-vis -vis the, the humanities yes. that, that we are still struggling on, on our continent. All right. All right. Viewers, this is AU Talks um, here on AU TV, and we are looking at educational reforms um, in Africa, and we still have Professor Zobo in the studio. We'll go for a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break, and we're still live at the, um, at the studios of the Association of African Universities, and this is AU Talks. Professor Zobo is sharing with us some great um, insight into how we can reform, revitalize, and transform African higher education. But before we left for the, the short break, we were looking at STISA, the STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, human, humanities uh, programs that our universities run. Now the entire continent, and we are looking at the hard science, and we are not creating that kind of entire relationship between the two. If you are looking for any grant, if you are looking for any scholarship opportunities, it is geared towards the hard science. What is your take on, on this trend that is happening? Are we not going to have the same crisis tomorrow where we come back and say that we are looking for humanities because we have advanced with the science? I don't think we should have that problem because mm. the liberal arts 
are the soul that tem that tem the world wild beast. Mm. Hard sciences and technology is the beast. Yes, that cannot survive without tempering from the from the humanities. Exactly. If we keep that marriage together, then we, there will be no coming back and 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 saying we want the humanities now, because you will have walked your journey with the hard sciences in one hand and the humanities in the other. Yeah, Always allowing them to mix mm. and to enrich each other so that they, there is a, an understanding that one branch of knowledge and education is incomplete without the other. Yes, it's like, it's like adding salt to one part of your dish and adding sugar to another mm -hmm. part of your dish. Sure. That these two will always guide our education system. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so we will, we will cease to and look at those two branches of knowledge okay. as if they were separate. We see them as two sides of one coin. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you agree that that is, that is necessary, then there will be no walking back and forwards and saying that the humanities are, the sciences are more important, important today and the humanities tomorrow will be more important tomorrow mm. because you are constantly mixing your coffee with sugar and with milk. Great. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, we want to look at uh, issues of harmonization. Now, some experts in higher education believe that the way to go is the harmonization of our educational systems where if you have a degree in Kenya, it is equal to the same degree in Ghana or in any part of the continent. What is your view on, on that as well? It's a very persuasive argument mm. and, and one which uh, tempts people into believing that harmonization is a solution. But you see, you want to say when you harmonize in Kenya, mm -hmm. you, what are you attempting to do? Because challenges in Kenya may not be exactly the same as challenges in Mozambique. Okay. So I, I, I would say that when it comes to specific programs like agriculture, mm -hmm. you want to harmonize because you see a common trend in weather patterns in Kenya and, and Mozambique mm -hmm. or Zimbabwe. And you want to say because we share common weather patterns, because we share uh, uh, common climatic conditions, Okay. We want to harmonize so that a graduate from a Kenyan university who wants to go and work in the World Food Program in Mozambique can do so. Sure. Because what, what he has learned in Mozambique or in Kenya is almost the same, mm -hmm. if not the same. But sameness, same, we have to be careful about this word, sameness. We are not saying, let us duplicate. These are not identical twins. Mm -hmm there will be areas of similarity and some areas of difference. Yes. We are simply saying, in order to ensure that we are not teaching uh, uh, the same things uh, differently, mm. we must be teaching those th same things in, in, in similar ways. So, we, we, we are looking at uh, uh, teaching of agriculture, for example. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in East Africa, the same arid des uh, desert areas. And you want to look at where the patterns in Southern Africa and, 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 and those, those areas which, show, which share commonality. Mm -hmm. University programs must begin to address that area of commonality. We must begin to say, what is it that we find in East Africa mm. which we also find in Southern Africa. Southern Africa. And how do we harmonize our programs in such a way that they are teaching those programs in similar ways? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you can't have a situation in which those programs are so vastly different that they, uh, they don't share anything in common. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it, it's not possible. Okay. Uh, even, er even some areas of Europe will share certain things uh, in common with certain areas in, uh, on the African continent. Sure. 
So harmonization, yes. Be also because it makes sense to begin to spend less uh, on programs where we can share resources. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are doing your, your own thing alone and someone else in another university is doing the same, the same thing uh, alone, we are not being uh, creative, creative. In, in our use of, of, mm -hmm. of, of resources. Okay. So we harmonize in order to share, number one, resources. We harmonize, uh, number two, because we are aware that uh, there are certain areas uh, uh, where knowledge is, 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 is common. Mm. Where our, our experiences will, will, will demand support. common approaches. Yes, yes then we'll be, we must harmonize. All right. So Prof, finally, um, what do you think we, we must do in the process of harmonization? Because we believe that when we are able to harmonize our educational system, it would automatically lead to academic mobility of both students and staff. And then by so doing, the entire continent will be united. For example, I can just come to Great Zimbabwe University um, in the third year to study psychology if I'm a student in Ghana. And by so doing, I will learn a lot of things in Zimbabwe. And the continent will be united. I will know the challenges in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe may also know the challenges in Ghana. And we try to come together and, and, and support uh, ourselves as a continent. Number one, we must do prayer research mm. to find out areas of commonality. Yes. Say in East Africa, in West Africa, in Southern Africa. Mm. Those areas where harmonization of the curriculum is important. I believe that is critically important. When we have done that, we will then begin to harmonize our curriculum because we know that our graduates from East African universities, from West African universities, mm. will be able to find the same, to, to address the same challenges in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, mm. in Namibia, etc., etc. Sure. So, prior research is critically important. Mm -hmm. You just can't walk into uh, the curriculum blindfolded because curricular change must address certain issues in the economy, mm. in society, we must find those areas of commonality mm. first. That's where we begin. Where do, we, where do our roads meet? How do we make sure that when we get to the point of, con of convergence, mm -hmm. we are ready to cooperate okay. and find common, common vision, uh, common, common uh, uh, answers to, to, to issues of development? I think. Uh, and once we do that, you must not walk backwards. You must walk from to the front, looking also back into the uh, into the mirror, and saying, "What is it that we our 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 requirements for development in East Africa share with our uh, uh, needs for development in, in 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 Southern Africa?" Okay. Yeah. That that's I, I believe that's. What we must do? Research, research, research. That's why research into climate change is so important. important yeah. There was a time uh, where, when we had in Southern Africa, Sarua, the Southern Africa yeah. Vice Chancellor's Association, and we had a, 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 a program funded by the Australians uh, on climate change. Mm. And I was part of that, of that committee. Where we, we decided deliberately that until we begin to share in common the challenges of, the, of, of climatic change, we have not started to find a safe basis. Mm -hmm. We are not making an argument for harmonization of the curriculum. Yes. We, we simply must understand how the world operates, how climatic change will either bring us together or separate us. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that is terribly important. Great. Prof, finally, we want to we want to take on Education for All, which says that nobody must be, be left out, um, no matter your, your gender, race, background, everybody on the continent must be educated. How do we ensure this by 2030? Oh, my God. That's a million <laughs> questions. Mm. Uh, and, and yet, it may be very easy to answer. Okay. You start by saying, whose child must not go to school? Mm. Is it your child? Is it this child? Who must not go to school? And, and then the answer is quickly, 
everybody's child must go to school. Mm -hmm. But then we must, we must look at our resources and deliberately uh, 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 focus them on specific areas of growth. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we ensure that everybody uh, uh, goes to school? This is where, again, governments must make deliberate efforts to make sure that our, our primary sector, our secondary sector, receive resources from the state. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't develop these two sectors, you will not have people who will go, come to universities. To the universities, yes. So we must, we must be careful and deliberate all the time in the manner in which we apportion resources. Mm -hmm. There was a time when the UN believed that primary education was the most important. Exactly. Now, the argument has shifted towards higher, higher education, education. Because it is the area of higher education that you have the, the technology-driven mm -hmm. programs and you have all the changes that are taking place uh, 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 in, in higher education. But you can't reach there if your primary and secondary education systems are deformed. If the foundation is weak, if the, foundation the burden is automatically weak, will crumble. Yes. You know, so... so you, how do we get there? That is your question. This, this, this is, must be a deliberate effort by the whole, the whole continent through organizations such as uh, the AU, mm -hmm. uh, UNESCO, uh, all those people who wish the continent well must apportion to each other areas for target, that must be targeted for development. Okay. And our resources must be carefully planned in such a way that they do not leave one sector behind mm -hmm. in the interest of another sector. sector. Yeah, we, they must all move together. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Prof, your final words to um, the education stakeholders, to the African Union, to um, our development partners, to our vice chancellor specifically, what must we do to ensure that we transform our education system? Well, firstly, there is no magic wand mm. when it comes to transformation of education. Great. It's a, it's, a, it's a terrain which is bedeviled with uh, uh, dark uh, areas with potholes and so forth. My, my suggestion, my advice is that education is so important that it cannot be ignored. Yeah. That if you don't think education is important, try ignorance. Sure. Uh, then you will get the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that we must all, all the time be vigilant to ensure that we do not uh, condemn any race, any tribe, and to ignorance. That mm -hmm. the, every, the entire nation, all nations, must drive themselves towards producing a literate citizenry. Mm -hmm. That's how you develop peace. Exactly. An educated citizenry is much more easy to deal with, to convince, mm -hmm. because knowledge itself is transformative. Transformative, yes. Than any illiterate uh, 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 group of people who survive on the basis of uh, superstition. Mm -hmm. If you fall ill, it's because your brother uh, planted uh, magic in, <laughs> uh, uh, in the road in which you walk, mm -hmm. and you stepped on it, and that's, that's why you are limping. Mm -hmm. As long as we remain there, as long as every time we have a problem, we run back to where we are most comfortable, that is traditional <laughs> culture. As long as we continue to do that, we will not progress. Yeah. We must begin to look at problems through the eyes of science mm -hmm. and to find solutions through the eyes of science. Thank you so much, Prof. And we are so grateful that you could join us in the studios for this insightful discussion. Thank you. We wish you all the best as well. Thank you very Great. much indeed. Thank Viewers, you. this has been AAU Talks, and we have been talking uh, to Professor Rugano Jonas um, Zobo. He is a board member of the Association of African Universities and also the vice chancellor for Great um, Zimbabwe University. And he joined us all the way from um, Zimbabwe. Stay tuned to AU Talks. Um, you can join us on our social media platform. Send us your comment. And until we see you next time, this has been AU Talks. My name is Chrissy Sam.